Caillou, what did you do to your sister? I made her look pretty, Mommy. Caillou, that was Mommy's expensive makeup. How many times do I have to tell you not to touch Mommy's things? Come here, you little twit. <laughs> oh! Oh! What the? Welcome to LJ Action Music to the All Ones Out. My thoughts on Bloom. Comment down below before we start the video and tell me what y'all thoughts about Bloom. Like, what would Bloom add a kid to y'all would? Uncle James, can. Can we play Space Explorer? Shut up for a second. I'm watching this unnaturally charming preschool show. Why are you watching a show for babies? Okay, kid. This show is extremely sophisticated and can be enjoyed by both children and adults. How? Why don't you How? shut your ignorant mouth and find someone who actually Dang. wants Dang. to play your silly Dang. space game? Dang. Dang. That would be cool. Dang. You and you have yeah, to do that your son. Sister, you have to say nice things. Yeah. Treat yeah. others how you want to be treated, mate. Oh. oh, I really needed to hear that today. This what? episode of The Odd Ones Out is called... Uh... Are you familiar with the Australian animated preschool show, Bluey? If your TikTok algorithm is anything like mine, you'll have seen a bunch of clips of this blue cartoon dog all over your For You page, paired with Subway... Hey, y'all didn't know that Bluey came from Australia? Then y'all... Then something wrong with y'all. Something wrong with y'all if y'all didn't know... That Bluey came from Australia. And y'all didn't know that? Then y'all y'all gotta go look back at the um, show. Look back at y'all dictionary history book. Like, look at and or look on the internet and type out where Bluey came from. Cause y'all didn't know that? Then something wrong with y'all. Surfer highlights. Wow, TikTok. Clips of a foreign preschool show? I thought you were supposed to cater to my interests. Can you what? Comments on these Bluey TikToks, shall we? No shame, I'm a senior in high school, but I watch Bluey religiously, and this episode made had me all in my feels. I'd say I had a good childhood, but I binge Bluey because adult life is so stressful and I'm sad, and it reminds me of a oh, right, right. everyone. I'm literally 27, and it's such a comfort show. Bluey is absolutely destroying me as a teenager who wishes he had this childhood. In my teenage, Damn! Watching full episodes of Bluey. Watching Bluey high is such a fun time, dude. Did they say watch Bluey high? You know, to me, fun? I'm just thinking out loud here. It seems like a lot of these comments weren't made by preschoolers. Yeah. On here. Now, if your yeah. brain is anything like mine, mm -hmm. you'll be thinking, why is this show about Australian dogs so popular with adults who don't even have children? In fact, why does Bluey have over 5 billion views on TikTok? 5 billion views on TikTok? And Coco Melon. And why is this episode number 8 in IMDb's no, highest rated no, episode of all time? This phenomenon. Dang, I didn't know that. I was also bullied by a large number of people on my own team to watch the show. Dang, so that was cool. One day I sat down, mm -hmm. put on the first episode, and. I watched all 141 episodes. All 141 episodes? But there's only 129 on Disney. Plus. Don't worry, my fellow obsessive Bluey fan. We're going to talk about that later. I work in cartoons, and I've mm -hmm. been to furry conventions, so Bluey has always been on my radar of shows I'm aware of. And just uh -huh. from the clips that I saw, I adored the art style, especially the backgrounds. So much so that my very own background team has studied and taken inspiration from Ooh, Bluey's background. What the? So here you can see my background. Oh, I, uh, I, 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 you two addicted to the show. The colors, especially their greens. Oh my god! You're too addicted to the show. These backgrounds bring a smile to your face. While I was watching the first season, I realized, oh, okay, I see why this show is so popular. Why? Because it's genuinely a good show. We've already established that the show is great to look at, but the voice acting, the sound design, mm -hmm. and the music are equally as amazing. So it's also great to listen oh, to. Why? While most, if not all, other preschool shows will hire adults who can sound like toddlers, Bluey gets actual children to voice the actual child characters. 
Somehow, every Australian yeah, toddler true. and bluey can be so expressive. I'll, I'll get it, right? It's impressive it? that the show got such a talented cast of child actors who don't sound annoying to listen to. Or maybe it's just their Aussie accents that I like. I don't know. The characters have so much personality, and the comedic timing is something I've never seen before in a preschool show. I can't think of a single time Coco Melon has made me laugh this much, or even smile. The four main characters are Chili and Bandit, the parents, and Bluey and Bingo, the six and four year old daughters. Yes, Bluey is a girl. You gotta catch up, dude. Come on, it's 2023. This. I, 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 if y'all didn't know Bluey was a girl, then I don't know what to tell y'all. Second of all, how Bluey is like the eighth best show in kid Amy. That that don't make no sense. And then did he just say they got kids voice acting the kid show? Can you see it'd be like when you go and watch Blue Cruise, it'd be like twenty some year old adult voice acting that uh, show. Or they'll be acting in the show and forcing the uh furniture and stuff or the cartoons of the kids show. You don't normally see kids for acting or uh, astral kid show and show show like that. Show also I, does I think not I don't know that it's Australian. It references multiple Australian locations and animals. They call yeah. flip yeah. thongs and they say things like "Oh no!" While some preschool shows what? focus on teaching kids numbers and letters, Bluey focuses on the relationship of the family and teaches its lessons through the <laughs> not, not wrong about that. that the family plays. And I want to emphasize how perfect these two parents are. These two are the most patient and emotionally aware parents I've seen ever. There are multiple times where the parents apologize to their kids for, frankly, not even doing anything wrong. The dad is like, the most perfect dad role model, okay? Check this out. Yeah, right? yeah, right. I was sad that dad didn't get to see the leaf bug outside. She was like, Daddy, come and see. Come here, Daddy. Quickly. But he was too busy playing with Bluey, you know, being a present father figure in her life. And at night, she's all boo-hoo about it. And he kneels down, gets to her level, and apologizes, explaining that he didn't hear her. Now, I don't have any kids. But if I spent my mm -hmm. weekend running around with toddlers, and then right before bed one of them said, <laughs> You didn't get to see the ladybug. I would say, That's okay. I've already seen a ladybug. Good night. In one episode, Chicken Rat. That was just cool. wrong, Cole. That was, that was just cool right like there. Where was the last place you had it? The two retrace Bingo steps, and through flashbacks, we see this bizarre day that Bluey and Bingo had. The very first flashback we see, Bluey and Bingo are cooking a chicken rat egg while wearing weird mm -hmm. costumes. And through this creative backwards storytelling, we piece together what a chicken rat is and how the kids ended up in this situation. It's episodes like that which really uh, made me appreciate the care that went into the show and really no, set the no, no, I don't remember the watching this school show. Like, like, school shows stick to a formula down to the viewer. I've been low. My own very first kid show with Tekken Bonnie, then I am watching like Seven Tree, Caillou, then Dora, no not Dora, then Arthur, Tommy and the Train, then Dora. But Bluey was like probably like the very last, last, last show that I pre, pre probably watched as a kid, but didn't really watch it like that show. Their preschool show. Most preschool shows stick to a formula and talk down to the viewer because typically their viewers are short. As a childless adult, I don't want to say this show teaches you how to be a good parent because I don't know how to be a good parent. But on paper, there are lessons in this show that are just as important for the parents to learn. So while watching season one, I got a feel for the world and characters. I started to piece together Okay, this show is depicting perfect parents, it's well written and wholesome, anyone regardless of having kids can enjoy the show. Let's watch the rest, shall we? Season 2 and Season 3 is when things go from a hundred to a thousand. This is when ah, episodes ah. have deep and emotional topics that I think toddlers are too baby to understand. 
Let's see, there's the struggles of keeping romance in your relationship alive when you have two toddlers to look after, why taking time to put a powerful effect that lasts into adulthood, feeling inadequate yep. as a mom, yep. it's like having a dad in the army, parents disagreeing on different parenting styles, moms getting tipsy implied, okay. dealing with infertility, okay. abandoning, okay. potentially a miscarriage, that Maybe. one's still up there. Maybe. And death. Probably. Probably. Actually, that one was in season one. You can't even compare Bluey to other preschool shows. Like, what the was Dora the Explorer even doing? Was she even trying to the adults who were also going to be watching her show? Dora had the same formula every episode, and there was a map who sang a song that was just repeating the same three no, words no, no, wrong about that. times. Season 2 is an episode that. where Chili is telling Bluey about how when she was a baby, she wasn't crawling or rolling over as fast as the other babies in her mom group, and she compared Bluey's developmental delay to the other babies and felt inadequate as a mother. And then this pink poodle comes to console her, looks directly into the camera, and says, You're doing great. I'm a he-him male with no kids, and I still get teary-eyed just thinking about that episode. People will tell you that Bluey is a kid's show that adults can enjoy too. No, that episode wasn't for the kids. It was directed at all the moms watching who are doubting their motherhood. When has Coco Melon ever done something like this? All the babies mm -hmm. stop singing yeah. mid-nursery rhyme, look directly into the camera and say, Hey mom, just wanted to say you're doing a great job raising me. Keep up the good work. Like, no, that'll never happen. I'm still not done talking about how impressive the writing in Bluey is, okay? So please indulge me for a bit. I'm switching into video essay mode as we do a deep dive into the themes and symbolisms of one of my favorite Bluey episodes, Flatpak. The entire episode is an allegory of human history told from a religious and scientific perspective, respectively. And it touches on the ever-growing relationships between a mother and child, all within seven minutes. No, I'm not reading too okay. deep into this. Let's begin. You, 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 you swing for their porch, and we get this great mm -hmm. meta mm -hmm. self-aware joke from Bandit when he complains about the instructions, saying, "I'm, I'm not, not taking, taking advice from, from a cartoon, cartoon dog. dog." Meanwhile, the girls play games with the leftover packing materials that are thrown into the yard by their parents. Bluey and Bingo are given bubble wrap, which they pretend is water, so they pretend they're fish. Then they're given cardboard, which they pretend is land, so they pretend they're frogs. Then they're given tails and become lizards, then T-Rexes, then birds, then furry little animals. Is this chart starting to look familiar? Then they're monkeys and then bipedal cave dogs. 2,000 years later. Somebody say jellyfish? Ah. What are you simpletons doing? You're supposed to. Hold it up a minute. I know you're going to love the parents' mm -hmm. allegory for the creators. You know, the, the, the big guy upstairs. The, the whatever you believe is going on. The parents supply the girls with their entire world. Whatever. They give the girls the sea, the land, the volcanoes, and the trees. In these cave paintings the girls make that tell their history, they depict the parents as gods, higher up and in the clouds. The parents being the creators is hinted at again by Chili when she looks at the girls lovingly saying, Aww, we, we made, made them. them. All together at the very end saying, Ah, this is heaven. Are you joshing me right what? now? This preschool show was able to tell a clever allegorical story with tasteful religious undertones in how I, I, I really Did you just make me feel emotions that. over a cartoon dog? This isn't the only episode you can make okay. an in-depth video essay on. There are plenty of other episodes you, you, that hit just as hard as this one. While I was doing research mm -hmm. for this video, it got me thinking about another foreign animated kid show with eight minute long right. episodes that focus on a family of two toddlers. Except, unlike Bluey, this show is universally hated. Ah. Caillou, it's Caillou. I had this idea ah. in my head that people only hated Caillou because he was a more accurate portrayal of a toddler. But in the handful of Caillou episodes I watched, mm -hmm. I was reminded, oh no, that's why people hate Caillou. Because he sucks. His brattiness isn't even important to the plot. It comes out of nowhere. Caillou will be getting ready in the morning. He spills cat food and says, Gilbert, look what, what you did. did. He's at the beach and oh, this bird who's done nothing wrong gets told to, Did he? Go away. 
And there's a bunch more examples of Caillou being a whiny piece of shit. And I can't help but think that Caillou's screeching, piercing, whiny voice does not Whatever. help him be a likable character. I bet real toddlers can be little punks sometimes, but why would you show that in your cartoon and not have him learn any lesson? There's never a lesson learned in Caillou. Since Caillou was a brat all the time, a lot of people, myself included, wondered why Caillou's parents never disciplined or even tried to change his bratty behavior. But after I thought about it, I realized it would be a very weird episode of Caillou if one day Caillou's mom was like, Caillou? What did you do to your sister? I made her look pretty, Mommy. Caillou, that was Mommy's expensive makeup. How many times do I have to tell you not to touch Mommy's things? Come here, you little twit. That kid got what was coming to him. I don't know, maybe that episode would be cathartic to some parents. Anyways, getting back to the actual best children's show ever, even though Bluey is literally the most mentally intelligent and educational show for the minds of children, teens, adults, and parents, some unnamed mouse company decided to censor some of the episodes on their platform. It's the strangest things that got censored, too. This horse pooping, Bandit getting hit in the groin, Bandit saying the word groin, this hitchhiker is no longer from Argentina. That one's kind of weird. This pretend cat saying it will pretend pee on the curtains. Bandit hinting at wanting to get snip snip down there. Adults, you know what I'm Ow. talking about. And the last 10 episodes of season three, which are some of the deepest episodes in the series, aren't even on Disney+. Plus. Wow. Pretty beautiful, huh? But that could just be a licensing thing. I don't know. I kept waiting for the infertility episode. I heard so much about it. I finally got to the last episode on Disney Plus and thought, oh, okay. They're saving the deepest one for last. All right, let's do this. What? And the episode was about the family playing courtroom to determine if Bandit farted. I hope this video convinced what? you to give Bluey a chance. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're still here listening to a grown man talk about it, so you got to be at least a little interested in it. Through its relatable it and realistic portrayal of family life, the show has not only entertained, but also taught value. Like, the show is so repairable to family life, drama, and happiness, and probably sadness too. So. Fast-paced, mind-numbing shows aimed at kids. Bluey reminds us all the importance of spending time with loved ones and finding joy in the everyday. And if you still don't want to watch Bluey, have you thought about getting high and watching it? Thank you all so much for watching this episode of James Never get, Never get obsessed high. over something he...